Peace. Today is Sunday the 3rd, which makes today's math understanding. Understanding is the best part. Is that cream that rises to the top and never stops. Okay, it's the culmination of knowledge and wisdom. Make your understanding understood. Peace. All right, peace. peace. Welcome back to the United Mean Godcast. I'm Lord Jamal. And I'm Digga Digga. Ah, that, that sounds so sweet to my ears. Feels good right to now. be back, man. So sweet to my ears. Digga Digga is back in the house. Back in the building. With your nigga. What's good? Chilling, man. Shouts out to Foxy Alex for holding it down in my absence. Thank you, Alex. You did an excellent job, she, as always. She definitely did her thing. Shout out to her legs. <laughs> hey, people was liking them legs. They, and they, them, they're going to get an Instagram profile next toes. to my shoulder. <laughs> them shell toes and that black she had going on. Yeah, they was liking that. Um, yeah, so so uh, we definitely missed you. You know, no Thanks. one can replace you, of course. But uh, she... You know, she definitely, you know, strive to sit in and... and, and, and Big do. seat to fill. I yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Understandable. But anyway, so how was your trip? Tell us a little bit about it, you know. It was great. My um my brother-in-law, shouts out, y'all love her, Outsiders. Um, he renewed his wedding vows to his beautiful bride, Miss okay. Tynell. Um, they've actually been married for 22 years. No, I'm sorry. They've been together for 22 years okay. already. Um, they married legally about 10 years ago. Okay. And they just won a contest. Um, they had to write an essay of why they deserve to have this wedding, um, like an actual, a nice extravagant wedding. And I'm not sure if it was like part of a reality show or maybe like a contest for a, like a, a an establishment based in Colorado. But hmm. um, shout out to Dazzles. Um, they provided them with a wedding. And the interesting part was um, there was actually a lesbian couple that originally won. Okay. And they decided to... Um, they decided to pass on their win to my bro. They said, you know, we we've said, been this through. This is not right in the eyes of God. No, that, and... no that's not. <laughs> no, that's not what they did, Jamar. Can, can you not what take my that? moment? Thank you. What no. Is what did what did no, the lesbian they were couple a very, say? They were a very stand up couple, and they said, you know, for everything that we've been through, mm -hmm. um, this couple with nine children has probably been through more. And wow, they, nine no, children! Oh yeah, that's the that's the kicker. They mm. have nine children together. Damn. Um, one girl and eight boys. So yeah, they, they beating the Brady bunch out this month. <laughs> right. Right. And um and and if you saw if you saw their mom if you saw the wife you wouldn't think she was a day over twenty three. Mm. She's still like this tiny like figure popping. So, shouts out to them. Um, so they actually inherited the wedding from the couple. They said, "Yo, we, you know, we feel like you guys have probably been through more than we did, and and this is our gift to you." So that was dope. Um, they got to have the wedding. Um, awesome service. Um, I don't think they took any formal wedding pictures because every time it was time to do something like traditional as far as wedding goes, <laughs> everybody's outside smoking. It's like, it's time to cut the cake. Wait, can you call them from outside smoking? There's a bunch <laughs> of Newports and Blunts out in the back. Could a you lot, please? Uh... A lot, a lot of Blunts. A mm. lot of Blunts. Um... Well, speaking of Blunts, <laughs> you're in Denver. Right. Tell me about the smoking. I know you were smoking lovely out there. Would you believe I did not step foot in one dispensary? No. I did. No. no. I didn't. I don't know why. You know, I'm. I, first of all, I was kind of off with the timing. So when it was like eight o'clock out there, I was dead tired because mm. I, I go to bed fairly early. I, I'm I'm up at seven a.m. East Coast time every morning. So and that altitude will fuck with you, right? It is the Mile High City. I'm out there waking up at like 4 a.m. And when it's time to like turn up, I'm dead tired. The kids turned up, though. Oh, they were <laughs> they were killing it. We had an Airbnb out there. OK, Um, they were killing it. Rooftop, jacuzzi, uh, music blasting. And I was just sound sleep through all of it. Well, now, you know, as far as the dispensaries go, you know, if you just go there and you don't have no medical card from a doctor, you're only going to get the base weed. Like, you're not going to get the best shit that a motherfucker like me would want. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, 
you know that that dispensary shit is not all that it's cracked up to be unless you go with somebody that has a medical card. Right. But you know, that's the, see, that's the thing. Other you, than that, you're smoking tourist pe- weed. People are going to find ways to get that medical card. Oh, yeah. I'm about to say, in every family, one somebody, oh, yeah. one somebody is going to gonna put together a cataract or something. I'm just and, saying, and as, get as them a, a medical tourist, card. It's, oh, yeah. it's hard for you to just come yeah, in and not, get the card in one day or some shit. Yeah, so like, you, if you don't know nobody, yeah. then you're going to have to just go there as a regular schmegular dude, right. person. And, yeah, and like, just, I can't just step off a plane and go get the, yeah, the highest grade of weed go in get the some, You'll go to the dispensary and get something, but you're going to be like, I had some but you know, shit. But you know what? Even their their mid-grade is probably kicking our, you know, yeah, nah. our top grade in the ass. You don't I don't so? know. I, I Trust me, I had some of that red. I was like, what the fuck is well, this? Well, you're the weed connoisseur. Yeah, like, like, trust me, that, you know. They regular, you know, they lower grade was lower grade. It's it's garbage. It's complete, I think, garbage, okay? I, I you know, can see that. It, it looked okay, but it wasn't. I think I think the weed that the kids out here smoking, you know, they putting all kind of shit in. They'll put some, they'll put some like, lemon Lysol in. Yo, I got that new lemon haze. It's like they're doing shit to the weed, so. Yeah, I don't, I don't fuck with all of that type right. of shit, but. So any other crazy, any other shit going on out there? Um. No, not not. It was it was pretty, you know, pretty simple trip. Like I, I basically was just in town, you know, for the family. Got to catch up with the family, and then I, I came back home. I um I did enjoy watching the segments, <laughs> watching Aha. watching your uh, DNA reveal. Oh, <laughs> that man. was fun. Let me find Ooh. out you're the industry plant. <laughs> ah. Knife and arm. Never. Um, yeah, yeah, that was some shit though, right? Shout out to Natalie Green, uh, myblackheritage.com. Um, yeah, that shit is ironic, yo. Because like like Malcolm is somebody that like really inspired me as a youth, like to even walk down a conscious road. You understand what I'm saying? Um... Yeah, to mix it with music and hip hop, like I was doing that early. Mm-hmm. Like I used to make tapes and like, and like have break beats with like Malcolm X speeches playing over the shit. And I was like, "Yo, this is the way to fucking teach motherfuckers." Like, right? Um, while your family was conspiring to bring him down. Well, it's like I almost I don't even want to claim this dude like this. Like, you got to understand. Like, this is. This is the brother of my mother's father. But my mother's father gave up my mother for adoption or, you know, was in cahoots with all of that. If the when the mother gave it up, he ain't do nothing. He ain't be like, oh, fuck that. You're not going to give up that child for adoption. You know what I mean? He let it happen or whatever. And then went had other kids and all this type of shit. So, you know. That's some foul shit right there. I, I, I know, I know you was fucked up. Like wherever you were in that moment, what? When, when she broke that news to you. Well, I, no, 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 I, no, no, no. Here's the thing. I found this out on my own. Oh, you found it out, okay? Because I became such a fucking detective mm. with this whole, you know, genealogy shit, and she's sh- now showing me certain places to look for certain shit that okay. I'm scouring and I'm going in my own like, hmm, let me try this, da da da. So I found shit on my own that I started sending her. Dope. Okay. And so a lot of that information that I found out about them, you know, playing in the Negro Leagues and all this type of shit, I found that shit out. And I found this out. <laughs> it, so I I revealed it to her like well, you know yo what? you're not that's, gonna believe this you shit you know what that's actually I don't know what I was exp- when I saw the you know I saw the tagline like Jamar drops the bomb about his uh, true uh-huh. I thought they were gonna say something like your your you know your real grandparents were white or something like I thought it was gonna well I mean, come on we mo- all got most, some white yeah most of that's the case with most quote unquote African Americans anyway but I didn't know well, I was uh, I was curious like what is the bomb gonna be yeah nah there, there's, that- there's no direct white there's a lot of light skinned motherfuckers you know what I mean a lot of like light skin in the family. like my my great grandfather when he first came here um it said mulatto 
Mm. Like first it said mulatto, then later on on the next census, because you know this is going by the censuses, um, he was then Negro. Mm. You see, so like in order to be mulatto, you had to be real light skin, and uh, I guess in order to be even put down in the census as mulatto, um, because I guess they would have put you down as black or whatever the fuck the case may be. But yeah, we had a lot of that type of shit I was seeing in the census. A lot of light skinned motherfuckers and shit like that. Mm. Um, hey, I could hey I could tell you some bombs about my family. And it's just the stuff I know. Um, such as, uh, <laughs> well, whoa, whoa, whoa! Uh, <laughs> Hang on, before you go, we have a family connection. Yeah, we do. That's we right. have a That's family right. connection. That's right. My auntie. And my auntie used to hang out together. Our besties. They were besties. Mm-hmm. Ain't that fucking crazy? That's crazy. And, and we had no idea of this whatsoever. Yeah. I just happened to, um, well, matter of fact, my, my cousin who. That was so crazy you revealed that to me. Yeah, because my cousin hit me up because it's his mother. Mm. Um, And he's like, yo, cuzzo. You know, uh, Rod Digger, you know, he got one of those <laughs> oh, yeah. scratchy ass way. And he's younger than me. But, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, cuz I, uh, Rod Digger's aunt used to, used to be hanging with my moms and shit back in the days. They was like best friends and shit. And I'm like, wow. Wait, 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 did he hang out in Newark? I'm like, whoever he said, that he sounds like a seen... Newark voice. Nah, nah, <laughs> That's nah, a nah. Newark he, voice he from all Brooklyn day. He's he from Brooklyn. But, um, he said, you know, he used to be over there sometimes. He I, said he might have seen you a couple of times okay. or whatever. Light skin. He he was light skin again. A lot of light skin motherfuckers in the family. Um, but anyway, he said, "Yo, his mom's and your aunt used to hang out." Yep. You know, doing what they do. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, <laughs> hey, you know. Yeah. The the the. Because my aunt is wild. My my aunt. My aunt was, my, was is you know, wild. Re, like re, right rest now. Rest in peace to my aunt. Um. Yeah, she was wild. I believe your aunt was actually with my aunt when she passed away. Mm. So, from what I understand, your 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 aunt had long like Indian hair, like. Mm hmm. And she used to wear it in this side uh, ponytail. Uh -huh, that's just and she was this high, and she drank her warm, tall can of Red Bull every single day. Well, no, she, she used to drink about a case. Mm. And she cussed like a seller with the cigarette and see, hanging that's a, out that's the that's mouth. That sound like my aunt. That's probably what I, they got along so fucking well. And they was rolling. Okay, rolling. <laughs> Cussing like motherfucking sailors, drinking and doing what the fuck mm -hmm. they doing. Well, fuck you. Mm. That's crazy. Yo, my aunt is the originator of shit. I'm telling that is the first adult. I, that's the first time I've ever. I've been hearing that since I was a child, a baby from my aunt. She is the originator. I know people associated with the character from right, Wyatt. From the, from the, she. But uh -huh. my aunt originated. He got it from her. My aunt originated <laughs> the she. <laughs> That's what's up. Or well, what other what other little uh family uh, shit you got to do? Oh reveal? my goodness. Well, my grandmother, my father's mother, actually served time in San Quentin for murdering her sister's husband. Rascleet. Yeah. Um so apparently there was a domestic dispute going on mm -hmm. between my, my great aunt and her husband. So my grandmother uh, tried to intervene, and I believe she was hitting the process. Mm. And Grandma said, said oh, "Oh yeah, fuck that. I'll be right back." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I so got something for that's, you. See, that's why she served the time because it was premeditated. Right. She left and came back. Went and got the strap and mm. came back and took care of business. I'm going to my car. Get my other gun. Shoot everybody's ass. Mm. So um. Shouts out so to you grandma. got some real dirty Harriets in your family. Grandma for real. and Grandma was a um. Grandma was a madam. As well. That's what I'm talking about. And is I didn't I didn't find this stuff out until after I was grown. I'm like, why y'all didn't tell me this when I was younger? You know how much cool points I could have got. I could have been putting that in my raps. I mean, now that I'm old, I, it was like some. Hey, you can still do it. You know, it was like some dirty laundry the family tried to keep him. Grandma hitting. I was, like, was a madam. I was like, man, I could have. And and her husband was Jehovah's Witness. 
Wow. <laughs> it's usually the other way around. No, nope, nope. He was the square and she was the she was the <laughs> Now my and I she know She was the pimp. My mother's father, uh, he ran numbers for the mob. Um my mom actually stabbed my dad before. Yeah, my it goes down nice. in my family. <laughs> Look, it goes down. Nice. Look, and that's just the shit I know. That's like the direct family tree. I don't even want to know what's going on with the greats and, and everybody. But I'm I'm actually I'm looking forward to, you know, to corresponding with Natalie and, and, and really finding out some things. A lot of my family tree is documented. Like my family on their own did a really good job of like you know, keeping things documented. So. Well, if they did a good job, then that's only going to be even more helpful right. to tracing even further back. Like, I definitely, like, I think everything is definitely well documented, probably up to the the second or third removed greats. Right. So. And see, and but having that documentation, like as far as the family, you know, we can say this and wait. Uh, oh, wait. There's one more reveal. Go ahead. So my look, he like what? what, what? <laughs> Let so, it all out. Ain't nothing so, beating that your uh, wait, you know, wait, your ancestor no. spied on Malcolm X. But uh, go ahead. And then wait. You no, can try. Wait. No, I got. I got one more crazy. My my great grandfather. My my on my mother's side, actually. Um, you know, there's there's great grandma with all of our family tree, but. My great grandfather also had an affair with her sister, and they also produced a family. Mm. So I have like two sets of cousins and second cousins nice. from like great grandma and great grandma's sister. Nice. That's some ghetto shit, right? There. <laughs> Wait, is that one of those hood configurations? Yes, it's a hood configuration. A hood yes, configuration. it is. So yeah, wow. there's, there's some things going on in my- And you know what's so funny is the 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 aunt that I'm talking about that knew your aunt, mm-hmm. she's the aunt I was thinking of when it came to hood configurations mm. in the first fucking place. Wow. Cause she did some crazy shit. I don't know if I want to get into uh- <laughs> it. But she caused all kind of confusion. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like wow yeah hood configurations okay. in this motherfucker so you got cousins that's people got cousins that's really brothers and sisters oh uh, exactly uh, and, and ooh, uncles and, and uncles uncles and, that's really brothers and, and, and nephew cousins it's just all hey, confused hey. yeah it's some hood shit but black you gotta love, love it <laughs> black love ladies love and gentlemen it. black love <laughs> Well, listen, um, if you want to uh, donate to the show, you know, go to uh, patreon.com uh, slash you not a mean, cash.me slash dollar sign you not a mean, or you not a mean.com slash support. Um, now, recently, you and I had uh, did a cleanse. Yes. Right? With the sister Herb Alchemist. Shout out to Herb Alchemist. Shouts out. Uh, when we come back from break, we're going to bring in uh, Herb Alchemist as our guest. And she'll be proud to know that I'm still juicing. I'm, still, I'm, I'm still going. Hey, I'm still drinking my water. Uh, you, know. wah, wah. you didn't had you a chicken steak from Max's already. No, I haven't. It <laughs> sounds fucking good. Though. Actually, let me not. Don't even. let me get nowhere close to Philly, and I will have one. <laughs> um, but yeah, when we come back, we're gonna bring her in. Um, she also got uh a brother with her from uh, what is it, BlackHistory.com or. Okay. Yeah, he's he's gonna build on on what he does uh, because we have an event. I believe that you and I are gonna go to yes in San Diego. Are you supposed to? Yes. Return of the Gods, and so they're gonna talk a little bit about that, their involvement in, about that. But mostly, I'd really like to sit her down and talk about you know different aspects of health, uh, sexual health, mm-hmm. uh, just health in general. You know, so let's, uh, when we come back, we're going to have the sister, Herb Alchemist. You know what I mean, Godcast? Peace. 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 Peace.
the absence of all confusion. United we stand, divided we fall. Two fingers together, the real peace sign, y'all. Brand Nubian peace gear. Hoodies. T-shirts. Snapbacks. Available at hoodchee.com. Get yours today. Okay, peace. Welcome back to the United Mean God cast. I am Lord Jamal. And I'm Digga Digga. Right about now, in the house with us, we have special guests. The sister that prescribed the uh, cleanse for you and I. Right. The one and only Herb Alchemist from Amas.com. Did Thank I say that right? Amash? Amas? Amas HS. Amas. Amas HS.com. Amas HS.com. Peace. And Thank also you. joining her from the African History Network, the president of such network, Michael Imhotep. Welcome, sir. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. So, wait, whoa, whoa. Real quick. Before we forget, uh, do you have something for me, Digger? Yes, I do. Because you you just taking too long. <laughs> you, you missed last segment. I know. I was supposed to do and, it the last segment. And, and <laughs> you're supposed to act like it's a surprise, but fuck that. I know about them. And my dog just chewed mine up. So can I please have my, my present, please? Okay. So I did a showcase last uh -huh. weekend out in Queens, and I met a gentleman who is the head of um, Global View Marketing, I believe is okay. the name. Um, he goes by the name of Nate. Shout out to him. And he gave me these. What pray tell did he give you? <laughs> Black Power earbuds. Wow. <laughs> one for me and one for you. Why, thank you. <laughs> you know, my, 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 my little dog, my, my new Bruno Boston, he just chewed up a pair of earbuds just the other day. I want to, you know. But this is right on time. And yeah. how how cool are those? With yeah, the, the with black the uh, I remember I used to rock the pick back right. in the days. The pick with the oh, with the black those power awesome, fist. Right? Those are dope. Yeah, I used uh -huh. to rock them in my fro. He actually had school. he had he had black fists and white fists, and I was like. Um, the oh, you, oh, I'm like the white fists are yeah. kind of like pointless. No, no, like no. It, it, it's it's, it's not convenient. <laughs> we don't <laughs> white power. We don't white power. We don't we don't. Nah, nah. I I get it. Some people like they're all you know their electronics yeah. all you no, know no, no, unison no, 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 no. monochromatic. Yeah. But Mono, yeah, yeah, we need to all keep black that, everything. We need to keep that black mm -hmm, energy. Mm -hmm. You can't be pro black and with white uh, power headphones. <laughs> oh God. Okay. So anyway. <laughs> He will find a way. <laughs> we are we we are back and we have our special guest uh this week, Herb Alchemist and uh Michael Imhotep. Yes. So how are you doing, people? Tell me about yourself. Um You know, what you you would describe yourself as what? Like a herb doctor and an herb alchemist, I guess you describe yourself <laughs> She's as. She's a yes? doctor of many things. Wow. Mm. You, that's, I'm honored, for one. I haven't received my doctorate as of yet. I am in a doctoral program for uh, the university. I don't of need Medical you to, 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 to get any, any, but, any, yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead. I yeah. just, you know, for, for the sake of people who, who get that word, who are very serious about that word. Right. Did she you know, go to Cornell? What kind of doctor? <laughs> yeah, no. I am in a, I, I'm becoming a, a minister, and so I'm getting my ministerial doctorate mm. from the University so. of Metaphysics. And um, but it's a process. But I am a Yadi gal, I would say, for one. Um, I yeah, am. Yadi gal. <laughs> yes. You're born Jamaica? You're born Yad? I'm Trinidadian. Mm. Trinidadian okay. American. My mother is from New Orleans. And her ancestry leads back into West West Africa, but she's also Creole, you know, and um, she's also part Cherokee, right. Native American. So, and then on my father's side, um, my grandfather's lineage leads back into East India. Mm. Trinidad is forty percent East Indian. It's about thirty percent West African. It has, you know, some Chinese, a few other Spanish, um, but. On the Yard family, I'm, I, my my name is actually Yardy. Like growing up, I was Brittany Yardy. Mm. You know, so I was always. That's cool. <laughs> even before I knew I think I've, that I Yardy. I saw that name on, 
we're Facebook friends on or Facebook, something like yeah. yeah, there you go. So even before I knew about Yardy culture, I've been a Yardy. That's all I've known myself to be in. Mm. And I was that girl that you could find climbing trees. You know, I would <laughs> go in my okay. backyard and pick the berries off the tree and, you know, recycle old bottles of sp- uh, body spray and try to make my own with berries. And, totally. you know, I was just always in the dirt. Always drinking out the coconut. Leaves. <laughs> <laughs> now I do. I was I didn't have coconuts growing up, but I surely do today. That's but, uh, yeah, so, you know, my father was a sea vegetation farmer uh, <clears throat> in Trinidad, and my grandmother was a medicine woman. Mm. And my grandmother was illiterate, however, you brought her anybody that wasn't well, they wasn't going to leave her house in that same condition. Mm. Mm. And then my mother, on my mother's side, um, my grandmother was a a nurse, you know. (laughs) And um, so I'm just pulling from my ancestry. You all mentioned ancestry. Now, did you sit at their feet, or or is this just something that's kind of in your DNA? It's in my DNA. Mm. Yeah, I never got to meet my grandmother, unfortunately. She transitioned when she was 89. I'm also an 89er. Shout out to all 89ers. Right, but she's know? within you. But she's within me. I'm mm-hmm. a reflection of her. I am mm-hmm. the future of her. So, yeah, I'm just pulling from my from the foremothers from my lineages. Okay, well, before we continue, Michael M. Hotep. Yes. The African History Network. Absolutely. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, we focus on educating, empowering, and inspiring people of African descent throughout the diaspora and around the world because right now it's corrects wrong behavior. I'm a talk show host, researcher, lecturer, and writer. I uh, do radio in Detroit, actually, 9, 10 a.m. Superstation in Detroit, host the African History Network show. You have, like, a radio voice. You got a good oh, radio thank voice. Oh, right <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Thank you. You sound comfortable on the <laughs> mic. So. I, I know. Oh, I, just, I just got a I splashy. believe you. I believe you. W-B-L-S. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> yeah, I'm very comfortable on the radio. That's uh, what's I've up. been doing radio for eight years now. Uh, I'm in uh, some documentaries. Um uh, the Black Friday documentaries from director Rick Mathis deal with economic empowerment mm. for African Americans. Uh, Elementary Genocide Part 3, dealing with uh, fighting against the school to prison pipeline and taking control of African American children's education from uh, mm. director Raheem Shabazz out of Atlanta. Uh, Resurrecting Black Wall Street, the blueprint from uh, um, Dr. Boyce Watkins, yourblackworld.net. Uh, so I do lectures as well. I have about 40 of my lectures on DVD. I've been studying history, uh, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship for about 26 years now. Uh, and I'm, uh, you know, I live in Detroit. Uh, our Facebook fan page, the African History Network, we have one million followers on really? Facebook. Absolutely, one million followers on Facebook. We reach people one all million around. twenty thousand now. Well, it's, yeah, well, it's just a, it's every a, day. It's a million. <laughs> it's over a million. It's amazing. So we reach people yeah. uh, around the world, and uh, you know, I interview a lot of the African Center scholars. I deal with uh, different topics. Uh, pertaining to the African American community and uh, African people globally as well. So you know, it's a lot that we do. So when you say network, yes, what do we mean by? You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like sure. is this a network of well different? Well, it started out uh, companies, media outlets. Well, well, yeah, I'm gonna have a YouTube platform, thirty eight thousand on YouTube, million on Facebook. I uh, have the WordPress. Uh, we have the Blog Talk Radio. Thousands of followers on Blog Talk. Right. Uh, we're on uh, Blog Talk, iTunes, Castbox. So, so put all those things place. together, that's your oh, network. Oh, yeah, we're all over the place. But I started out posting videos on YouTube just mm-hmm. trying to educate our people. Right. And then people started asking me, well, where can we get these videos? I said, okay. So people said, you need to start selling them. All right. So then I set up distributorships. I got set up agreements with different distributorships, got in touch with uh, one of my teachers, Dr. Linda Jeffries, put me in touch with Professor Jane Small, uh, who's another one of my teachers, and uh, set up a dis- distributorships. But then um, I started doing my own lectures as well. So, you know, now that's largely what I focus on. But uh, I do uh, broadcast on Blog Talk Radio, broadcast on 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, Facebook Live broadcast. We're on YouTube. So we're all over the place. Hmm. Then I write articles as well. Let me ask a question because yes. I, I feel like the term hotep is is be, is starting to get a very, like, negative connotation. Like, I'm, I'm actually... You know, when I look at different things on social media, sure. you know, it's almost being used as like an insult. It's like a fucking circus going on in the so-called black conscious community, man. Uh, hotel, hold down. Oh, it is being used as an insult. Right. Yeah, so can, people, yes. can you can you like explain like definitively like sure. the, the term, you know, how the term was derived and what it actually represents? OK, well, the term hotel comes from the metal netter. 
metal netter is the ancient language of the ancient Egyptians. What the, uh, Egypt is not what we called it. Uh, that's an Arabic word, is uh, Kemet. Kemet is one of the original names, meaning the land of the blacks. You also see the uh, name Tameri, which means the beloved land. Hotep is an offering of peace in the Metal Net language. Mm. It has become uh, corrupted by a certain segment of the African American population okay. that are into some other things. And uh, they use it as a term to demean the quote unquote conscious community. Those ho teppers, yeah, I heard that. I, I see yeah. that a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. But we don't say those what up doors. Right. See, we don't say that. So they, they use it in, in, in a, a negative uh, light. And uh, they use it to demean a certain, certain segment of the African American population. Uh, and usually this segment is trying to bring the light and the knowledge to the masses. OK, so uh, but uh, you, so usually a lot of times when I hear people use it derisively, I, I, I know they don't know what it really means. Right. OK, so they're I telling like on themselves. I feel like a lot of people don't know. What no, it they means. don't. And then you well, get into Imhotep. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, well, the, but the, see, the thing is largely. But so many different things. Yeah. But the thing largely is we've been robbed of our history and culture. Mm. So you can have a small segment of the population oftentimes being financed by Europeans that will use that term in a corruptive manner. Right. To demean others. OK. okay. And then Imhotep was the father of medicine. Imhotep was one of the greatest people oh, who ever lived in, in human history. Imhotep means he who comes in peace. Mm -hmm. OK. And he was a uh, uh, designer of the Step Pyramid or um, Mastaba for uh, Pharaoh Zosier or Nesubiti Zosier because we ain't calling pharaohs, and the Subiti would be the correct term. Um, he was a philosopher. Um, he was um, uh, an architect, mathematician, okay? And he was known as the world's first multi-genius as well, okay? So that's Imhotep. And okay. if you read uh, uh, Dr. Maleficati Asante has a book dealing with ancient Egyptian philosophers, and one of them he talks about is Imhotep in there. This is before the, uh, uh, Aristotle, Socrates, and and all these Europe, all these Greek philosophers come along. Of they course. studied his teachings. Of course, yeah, of course. they studied his this. teachings. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Imhotep. Tell me for quickly a, a, a little bit about your, you know, your beginnings. You know, like what, sure. what led you on this road? Absolutely. And I want to ask the sister the same question. Well, I, I started in college. You know, I graduated from Wayne State University in 1994, but I started in, I started studying in college uh, in 1992. The Malcolm X movie came out. That blew everybody away. I read the autobiography then. I should have been studying for finals. I was reading the autobiography of Malcolm X. Couldn't put it down. Mm. You had uh, Conscious Hip Hop led me to that, to that direction. You know, you had Brand Nubians. Uh, you oh, know, Brand shit. Nubian, uh, uh, Slow Down. You had X Clan, Public Enemy, all this stuff at that same time, elevating our conscious level. Mm -hmm. You had the TV show A Different World, elevating our conscious level every week. And then uh, in the in the conscious hip hop music, you had snippets of Malcolm X, snippets of uh, Louis Farrakhan. You had them referencing Osiris and Isis and Harriet Tubman, all this stuff, right? So all this is coming at the same time. So Church. then, I, so, so then I'm studying, and then at the same time, you know, I'm majoring in business administration. And I see the intersection between African history, African American history, African culture, and economic empowerment. Usually, the brothers I knew who had the knowledge of African history didn't understand economic empowerment and entrepreneurship, and the brothers in the business school didn't understand our history and culture. Mm. Okay, so I can speak both of those languages. Is my degrees in business administration. I can go from the boardroom to the lecture hall. You yeah. know, I speak both of those languages. So that's what led me to that. And then when I started studying and I was and I was inspired in, in college, I started writing in college and selling my writings on campus. Mm. You know, it was, the, it was the TV show A Different World that led me to the Pan-African Student Union mm. at Wayne State University because I saw them talking about Pan-Africanism and the Pan-African Student Union on A Different World. And they were involved in an anti-apartheid uh, uh, rally. So then I sought out the Pan-African Student Union on campus. That's how I got involved into that. Wow. You know, so so imagery is so important. You know, Absolutely. You know, whatever is disseminated becomes imitated. And, 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 and what you read, see, and hear influences the way you think, feel, act, and behave. So this is why we have to have control of our media to be able to right. fight, fight against what's going on right now. Mm. Yeah, that's that's something. Frame that of very, reference I talk about a lot. very passionate about. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, and I wanted to ask you, sis, so your your grandma um, influenced you to, you know, get, you know, I guess, get more with the uh, natural remedies and things like that. Like what inspired you to? Well, to be honest, like I mentioned, I never met my grandmother. Um, 
it's more so my father. Oh, right, right, my right. father okay. told me once it came out of me. My father ended up telling me about you know my family lineage. So that's why I mentioned I have to mention that. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, like I mentioned, I was just always connected to the earth. Like my, I loved fruit growing up. That was okay. my favorite thing. Like you could always catch me in a tree eating a mango or eating some cherries, or I would go on hunts. And I, I grew up in Palmdale, California. It's like an hour north of LA, mm. and uh, in the desert, you know, the high desert. And so you know, we'd go looking for for fruit trees and stuff like that. It was before you know a lot of people from LA began to move up there. And so I just kind of live like that's just my life. Right? Just try it. You know, so yeah. what was what was the first thing that you put together that you realized, like, wait a minute, this works better than something I would right. buy from the store? So when I was in high school, I ran track. Um, I gained a little wait weight. Wait a minute, you're not still in high school because you look like you're 16. <laughs> right. <laughs> No. Talk about melanin 16 magic. Plus you're not 12. You're not still in high school? Right. <laughs> no. That oh. melanin is popping. I thought you were 16. Not at all. I can't oh. be a 16 year old right now. No. <laughs> no, but what I was saying is that I wasn't I was in I was running track, right? I decided to run track because I was gaining a little weight and I was like, "Oh, I can't. I don't want to, you know, get too out of shape and I felt unhealthy so I was like let me run let me join the track team I was 11th grade and I ended up getting a staph infection mm. a very deadly bacterial disease it, it's a killer to be yeah. honest with you. if it stays in your blood long enough it can kill you a lot of people actually die in jail um, from staph infections mm. die all over the world from mm-hmm. staph infections mm-hmm. I actually uh, have a friend who who had a cousin who passed away from a staph infection and so uh, I didn't know what it was initially. Thought it was a spider bite. You know, I was trying to drain it myself. It, just, it wouldn't stop draining. I had it in two different locations on my body, and uh, you know, my mom took me to the doctor, and they let me know what was going on. They let me know it wasn't just a spider bite, or it could have started as a, a spider bite, but mm-hmm. it had matriculated into staph infection. We all have wow. staph on our our skin. Mm-hmm. It's a natural. Um, it's naturally on our skin, but it, be- it can become infected. Okay. And so um, they gave me antibiotics. It went away within a few weeks. I was like, okay, I'm good. And um, so then I noticed about a month or so later, another one had returned and in a different location. So I go back to the doctor like, it's here again. What do I do? You know, because at that time I began to research what was going on. And, and, you know, or before that, I you know, after they told me I had it, I went and looked it up. And I was like, oh, thank God that was over, you know, but then it came back. And so it was like this cycle. I would go to them, you know, get the antibiotics. Come in. And so I decided to take my life into my own hands because I realized that my life was at stake. Right. It was a deadly infection. It just would not stop. And so and I And this it, Western I be, medicine was just it not, was not working. It. Mm-hmm. And it was causing other infections. I would mm. excuse me, fellas, I would get yeast infection. You know, it was just upsetting my system. From antibiotics. Me. No, and that's they, that's, they were, no, that's heard very yeast infections before. That's very, very common with women taking yeah. antibiotics. Yep. Right. That's and a side so, effect. And so um, I began to research, you know, and um, go to the library, you know, go to the internet, go to you know, and research what was a natural remedy for a staph infection. Come to find out, one little baby herb, turmeric, turmeric root was the number one herb for treating a staph infection. Mm. Shout so, out turmeric. Shout turmeric out to turmeric. Yeah, a lot of shit. I was just yeah. gonna say that turmeric, turmeric is a motherfucker. Like when yeah, I just, I, I don't turmeric. think there's any food that I eat that I don't uh, cook, <laughs> put turmeric, turmeric. in it. Yeah. Absolutely, and so I began to work with turmeric um, and I'm Trinidadian, so we naturally eat curry, which is, you know, has mm. turmeric and curry. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, wow, I've been taking this my whole life, but I didn't realize it could save my life. And so wow. I just began to work with it. I made a tea. I had a little cayenne. I made a little poultice with some honey and I applied it to the boils and I drank it. And within hours, it was gone. Amazing. It was gone. I showed my sister, like, look, you know what the doctors attempted to do in weeks? It was one little herb mm. salt. so i knew at that moment for the i knew that i had found what i wanted to do with my life Dope. and i worked with turmeric for years like four years i would make everything out of turmeric. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. 
<laughs> every every problem that people come to me with. I got oh, the turmeric. Yeah. Turmeric. <laughs> just rub a little turmeric on turmeric that motherfucker. Root. Turmeric. It was turmeric root for years. I would say probably for the first five years of me being an herbalist. Wow. Was that was your turmeric. <laughs> that was your answer. That was your cure all. <laughs> Really was. Wow. Yeah. So that that's what really catapulted me into uh into the medicine work. That's dope. That's well listen, cool. when we come back, you know, we're gonna talk about, you know, just more about health, different types of health. Because uh, I know well, I know you have your products, number one, uh, that deal with male and female health reproductive health all that type of stuff so i want to talk a little bit about that we're going to talk about why you know what you two have going on as far yes. as the return of the gods uh that um you know Dick and I we'll be, to be participating a part of. in yeah. yeah yes and uh yeah we'll get into all of that when we come back peace it's the absence of all confusion United we stand, divided we fall. Two fingers together is the real peace sign, y'all. Brand Nubian peace gear. Hoodies. T-shirts. Snapbacks. Available at hoodchee.com. Get yours today. Peace. Welcome back to the United Mean God cast, Lord Jamal. Digga, digga. We got our special guests in the house right now from AlmasHS.com, Herb Alchemist, and from the African History Network, we have Michael Imhotep. Yes. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having us. Thank you for being here. Thanks for coming. Uh, So when we left before, you know, we were discussing um, how you got into... Roots you know, and, yeah, roots and culture <laughs> and being an herbalist. You can't and, say roots and culture without putting a yardy twist on okay. it. Roots and culture. Yes. <laughs> me love me roots and culture. Murder. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, we were talking a little bit about, you know, herbs. And I know you make your own Turmeric was your thing originally, <laughs> um, but you moved on to you other evolved. herbs. You discovered uh, <laughs> that there are other herbs out there, uh, and and you got into like mixing your own herbs and stuff That's like it. that, and creating your own elixirs and tinctures and stuff. So let's talk a bit, a little bit about that. Okay, yeah. So you know, I did end up going to college for track. I was recruited by Long Beach State University as well as uh, UC Riverside. I transferred to UC Riverside from Long Beach State, and college just wasn't doing it for me. Uh, I just wanted to go deeper. You know, there was just something that just really was pressing. It was around two thousand nine, and I just decided to leave college. You know, President Obama had just been elected, mm. and I just decided to go on a journey. And it was after I, I had a real, I had some really powerful professors at Long Beach State University uh, uh, from the black. They have a really strong Africana Studies department at, uh, I actually changed my major over to Africana Studies at Long Beach State. And just the things that I was learning about my, uh, our people and the things we've experienced, I just wanted to go further and really understand who we were, you know, before slavery, before these types of things. And, and so... I began to study, I was a part of, I began to learn um, the teachings of high priest Kwatamani. Um, you know, he's located Central Belize, uh, account, excuse me, Central America in Belize. And um, just really reading and, and discovering the beginning of where we shifted mm. in terms of our health. Okay. You know, and um, us really taking after um, the Caucasian design opposed right. to... The American diet as... You know, mm -hmm. yeah. as we know, is probably like the worst diet of any population. Right. Yeah. And so I um, just began to seek knowledge in a different way and in particular about health. And I managed a juice bar with uh, with the Kwatamani uh, royal family. I also um, was a um, 
a former partner with Stuff I Eat Vegan Restaurant out in Los Angeles, very big restaurant in Los Angeles. If you're ever in Los Angeles, go to North Market and Queen Street and go get some soul food, some vegan soul food at Stuff I Eat Vegan Restaurant. And so, I, I, you know, I just began to work with different food scientists. I was a raw foodist for a couple years. And um, it was when I was 20 years old that I realized I really needed to start making money, for one. I needed to start taking okay. care of myself. Right. <laughs> you know, I was a street performer at the time. I used to dance at Venice Beach uh, for tips. That's how I survived. That's how I made a living. I was like, I need more money. You know, like, I need, I need more than this. Mm. And the person I was dating at the time was like, well, you need to open a service. Open a service. And, and f- you find a need and fulfill it. And I was like, well, I love herbs. I love working with herbs. And said, so me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love working with herbs. Uh, marijuana is great. You know, so is, there's like a billion others, you know. And so we're I, marijuana friendly people. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I'm from Cali, girl. So it ain't, they don't call me herb alchemist for nothing. <laughs> but um, so, yeah, I uh, he invested in me, he gave me a hundred dollars said, make it happen. Open your business. And so. I had to be smart because balled I had to out make on you. That, uh, made that hundred dollar stretch. Mm. I had to find, but I I wanted to be creative, so I just I worked with a few formulas. Uh, I would say goddess life. This was a it was actually womb tonic at first, mm. and it was just in a little shot cup. You know, I just mix it up right in front of everybody. Here, take it. Plug your nose. Okay, thank you. It, it wasn't the greatest in taste when I first created it, but uh, my friend allowed me to set up in the shop. He had a little weed shop in LA. Uh, and so he let me set up my herbs and everything. And, you know, I, I would just provide it to his customers. And, uh, you know, after a while, he would, they would come to him and they'd be like, hey, I'm going to spend this with you. But I'm gonna spend this up front with the herb lady. So just, and he noticed like, hey, you're starting to cut into my my finance. You gotta Uh-oh. go, Uh-oh. you know? Yeah, because they'll come looking for him. Like, where's that herb girl? The one that has the herbs. And they want to so, see you doing good until you're actually doing good. Right. So I had to transition. <laughs> I eventually started at working out of the park, out of Lamert Park. I would sell my herbs on the weekends, and that's when I started to put them in the bottles. Okay. You know, and then I also um, got hired with Trinity Herb Company. It was a Christian-based herb company, and I was their number one uh, distributor. And so uh, from there, I just really started. I shut it down in the streets, and I opened our, we opened our online store. And so just word of mouth began to spread and people began to, because I, I may, I have three products here, but I make over 40 products. Okay. Take care of the hair, skin. Well, not to cut you off, but real mm-hmm. quick, let's talk about these products, what they do real quick, because I want to get into, yeah. we, we, we're we limited with time. Right. I want to get into, you know, some conversation and stuff. Um, I see you have King Power, Healthy Cell, and... What's the goddess other one? life elixir? Goddess life elixir. Okay, yeah. so I have two of these. I have you gave me King Power and Healthy Cell, and then you also gave me um, the uh, it, uh, oh, shit the one for intelligence and remembering. I can't remember right now. <laughs> you haven't been taking your <laughs> you no divine intelligence. That's oh, what it's called, divine go. intelligence. And I Good. and I have the goddess elixir and yes. the healthy cells. Yes, and divine intelligence. And divine intelligence. So briefly, just give a quick synopsis of each one. Okay, cool. So goddess life elixir, female reproductive health, assists in bringing blood flow to mm. the reproductive system, balances the hormones, well, assists in balancing the hormones. Um, so this is going to help to prevent the cysts and fibroids from forming. Right, uh, and that's and what we're working pre- on together. Right, that's a precursor to a lot of womb maladies, even endometriosis, infertility, all these different things. So, Can you just make sure the mic is on this side of your face because we have 80% men that watch this and oh. I know they're, they're like oh my gosh we will so not beautiful. sexualize the she, goddess <laughs> she's so beautiful <laughs> and so I do not want to block your okay. face okay. and uh, make sure they get all of that <laughs> go ahead so yeah, a goddess life elixir also assists a woman in experiencing her maximum sexual experience. Mm. A lot okay. of women that are not 
uh, orgasming report back to having orgasm after taking goddess life women that have not been multi-orgasmic become multi-orgasmic after taking goddess life women who've never experienced a squirting orgasm usually experience a squirting orgasm mm. for those that's oh, never shit. experienced a waterfall <laughs> let's talk about it she, she's a got waterfall. the squirting tonic <laughs> well they call it I'm just gonna the say the female this. ejaculation right. as, okay. as it's scientifically <laughs> called ejaculation. and it's not piss <laughs> a healthy functioning uterus like good sex is the result of good health mm. you know right. what I'm saying right and so this helps you to experience good health and so that's why it maximizes it also brings blood you know to the clitoris increases the mm. uh, pleasure factor increases the sensitivity these type of things because it helps to move the plaque really mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to erection even a clitoris it becomes erect mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. um, and so it, this requires blood flow Mm -hmm. You know, goddess life elixir is also good for the heart. That's one thing I don't often mention, but it's very good for the heart. And you need the heart to be healthy in order for the blood to flow so that you can experience an erection. This is for both male and female. You know, so um, it's also, you know, with it balancing the hormones, a lot of women have reported back that they've received a baby. You know, they've oh, wow. been able to conceive as a result of taking goddess life again I mean, careful ladies yeah i mean that's also the result of a good you're gonna be 50 years old like whoa <laughs> <laughs> guys you'll never guess what happened last night <laughs> now as far as the squirting thing you were talking about <laughs> <laughs> let's get back to that, to that for a second <laughs> we circle back to that um, from what i understand is it true that if a woman is not squirting, that she's actually not functioning properly? That's absolutely down there. That's absolutely true. Mm. Was your thing working before? Got to, to talk about that a little bit. Yes. Well. Okay. So. I just want to know for scientific reasons. Absolutely. Right. I'm going to get scientific with you. Mm -hmm. not, not that actually being turned on by the man would have anything to do with it. Huh? What? Well, yeah, the man has a lot <laughs> to do with it. Oh, of course. Like, Connection, you know, of It is course. psychological. No, 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 no. But, no, a but, woman should be but, able to bring herself to a squirting orgasm without a partner as mm, well. And so right. Mm. When uh, we talk about... Uh, Asking for a, a friend. Orga or a female ejaculation... <laughs> My friend said she could do it by herself. So. <laughs> when, when we talk about uh, the reason why a one, uh, when you say that it's saying that women is well, you're not working right, basically, mm. is because talk about it. is because women have that's what it's supposed these, to do you're saying it is mm, women have right. two ducks it's hard for me to call it the skeins gland because that's a european name it's named after a european so man don't, don't and so call i it just that call then. it these two ducks okay mm -hmm. on the side of your urethra that lead to your urethral sponge mm. your urethral sponge is a female g-spot okay mm -hmm. as all, um also known as a female prostate women have prostates too mm -hmm. and so um, this urethral sponge fills up with prosthetic acid. You know, mm. I call it PSA. It's a fluid that's created by the, the prostate. Both men and women create this fluid. And so what happens is um, the there's a, a gland, the skin's gland, that's a part of the urethral sponge, right? And these glands are also connected to the, clitor the nerves of the clitoris. Mm. It's connected to the... Uh, urethral sponge mm -hmm. and the, the, the uh, skin's gland is connected to the skin's ducts. Mm -hmm. The skin ducts are the two ducts that are on the side of the clitoris where the squirt ejaculates through. Mm. Okay. And so if a woman does not push out the squirt when she reaches that point, what she does is she causes it to go back up into her urinary tract. Mm. This causes uh, urinary tract infections. Wow. It attributes to bladder infections, kidney mm. infections, because they're all connected. It wow. also, um, I am, I'm bringing this information forth. It has to contribute to cervical cancer and uterine cancer. Mm. And okay. the reason why I say that is because in women, when we have ele elevated levels of pro of cancer of PSA, um, you can develop breast cancer, mm -hmm. right? When a male goes in for a prostate exam, what do they do? They also they check his PSA levels. Right. If his PSA levels are high, then that means that you know he can very well be dealing with prostate cancer. Okay, so uh, it's very important. It's beyond oh, 
you know, she squirt, she squirt, da, da, da. or this is a thing for porno, or this. It's so yeah, much it's further than that. it's way deeper than that, than that right. right. Because, I mean, men, all we ever hear about them, we hardly ever hear about them having yeast infections, though it can happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they get, obviously, STDs, but mm-hmm. they don't hardly know half the time. We're the ones that end up saying, you know, well, this is going on, that's going on with your system. And so... But women deal with so many different types of infections right. all the time. You got your bladder infection, kidney infection, bacterial vaginosis, like just all these things. Dick, got anything you want to ask? Ladies, get some goddess life elixir in your life. Partly due to the fact that we are not squirting. Okay. So that's how serious it is. So, okay. So I'm going to ask this for a friend. Um, <laughs> say you're already there. If you take that, then what happens? <laughs> like, what's that experience? What Noah's like Ark that. type <laughs> shit? <laughs> huh? 40 days and 40 nights out this bitch? Okay. Huh? So is that like the, huh? guy, ever, the guy is going huh? to like haul ass out the room like, whoa, whoa, this bitch crazy. We breaking the firmament <laughs> out this motherfucker? What's going on? Talk to me. Okay, so <laughs> I would just say as a person who's taken Goddess Life Elixir for the past eight years, I now understand that there are levels to the female orgasm. Okay, hey, hey, hey drop, drop Smike. <laughs> <laughs> drop Smike. And on that note, ladies and <laughs> gentlemen, oh, yeah. Herb Alchemist, Goddess Life Elixir, um, Divine Intelligence, that's the memory? Yes. Well, I want to talk about these three here because these three are available. King okay. Power. <laughs> okay, yes, to please. Tell yeah. the people where to get them and, and the dosage they should take for somebody to go home and drink the whole damn oh, don't bottle. Don't do that. Don't, <laughs> don't do that. that. It'll, it, you, that'll hurt. Please, man, go ahead, my son. You have permanent still erection since December 25th. Okay. okay. So, teaspoon a day. Okay. This little bottle lasts you two and a half, three weeks if you take it daily, if you take it at the regular dose. And then um, I have it in a bundle form so you can get five of them at once. That's a better deal. I ain't going to lie. It's it was getting a little spilly when I was teaspoon in it i know i don't use i just take a like swig that. i take a swig too yeah I, I know but you know i have to but i if, figured if we, like the, a the amount of a swig is, is a teaspoon, teaspoon. that's Thank what you. i'm yeah. thinking i never use a spoon yeah but it's about a teaspoon the first time i tried yeah it was getting all low i said i'm gonna fuck a waste this shit yeah you don't want to just yeah. throw it back now, <laughs> throw it back now I, I haven't i have you you've actually supplied me with products and and you know we spoke i had to go out of town in engagement so i haven't really been able to to like follow the the complete protocol yeah. for the fibroid regimen but yeah. i'm gonna holler at you after i see what that goddess life do oh for sure <laughs> yeah and then the king power i got for the brothers okay you know? and so uh king what's that power- do for us <laughs> okay so let's talk about the prostate a little bit okay so uh for one heart disease is the number one killer of african-american men right number two is cancer mm. the top of that list of cancer is prostate cancer Okay, now as a man, uh, a man's testosterone levels begin to decline um, after 50, right? Mm-hmm. And what happens, he stops having an active sex life. He, he stops mm-hmm. having as much sex. So what happens is he starts to build up that PSA, mm-hmm. again, that we spoke about, okay. right? And so when that happens, it um, um, causes a prostate to swell, you know, precursor to prostate cancer right mm. and so what king power does it for one oh excuse me king power it helps to clear out the vessels that lead from the prostate to the penis so it helps to allow for maximum blood flow this is maximum strength length girth also increases the stamina and um, libido and balances the male hormones keeps okay. that testosterone pumping you okay. know so a man well in his his older years can still experience a healthy like Popeye self, with a spinach self, uh, <laughs> healthy sexual life with you got out. a bunch of niggas that didn't hear nothing but length and girth <laughs> that's all they heard they said oh, okay yeah Black yeah flow. you get Black some of that flow. they don't care about the the the, the uh the, the, the health benefits of it. What'd she say? <laughs> Length and girth? <laughs> Give me some of that king power. When the blood can flow to its maximum potential, then it's naturally going to make it rise to its ma- maximum length. Nice. And so okay. um, I did want to mention, I mentioned women in the heart 
I, I just want to touch on the heart for a second with the brothers and the importance of having a clear heart. A lot of brothers that experience high blood pressure will experience erectile dysfunction. Mm -hmm. And this is especially if they have taken high blood pressure medication. It's partly because high blood pressure medication thins the blood. It's a blood thinner, right? Right. Because they got all this sludge in, in their vessels. So it's like, okay, well, let's, let's thin the blood so the blood can get through these dirty, clogged vessels. I say no detox clear right. the vessels right so the blood can flow food really is the best medicine it right. truly truly is and so what, what king power does it helps to flush those vessels down there um you know with the prostate and so and then healthy cells is uh for cellular health you know so that's for both male female you know and um it just helps to uh, in a sense, prevent the cell from retarding. And this is because mm. it's loading the cell with oxygen, plant oxygen. It's number one food source. And, um, you know, it just is a, a collection of foods from the auric scale. Look at the auric scale. Highly oxid, the world's most oxygenated foods. Mm. And uh, with some resins and, you know, some oils from Africa. So nice. That's so dope. Now, uh, Michael Imhotep. Yes. Um, coming up, uh, we have Return of the Gods, right? Yes, in August. In, in, in August, in San Diego, yes? Mm -hmm. Yes. What is your involvement with that? How did you two come together as far as working together? And you know. Well, I, I'm one of the honorees, actually. Oh. Uh, Return of the Gods nice. for, for the work that I do, the teaching I do. Uh, uh, Brittany and I, well, uh, Herb Alchemist and I, we connected through Facebook. Uh, been Facebook friends seven years yesterday, actually. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, do you got one of those coiny little, y'all yeah. been, <laughs> we've yeah, been friends for seven years. Right. anniversary. That's fucking, yeah. oh, yeah, those yeah. shits are so corny. So, I never post that shit. So, so we connected through uh, Facebook and then, uh, uh, she saw some of my Facebook live broadcasts and we started talking about it and she does broadcasts also. So we share some of them on our uh, Facebook page and, um, um, she was telling me about the uh, return of the guys from Real Family Reunion. Actually, um, back in uh, December 31st uh, and January 1st in Los Angeles, uh, she had me speak at the Caress Unity Center, okay, for uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day. And then um, they said, hey, you know, you should um, definitely do uh, Return of the God. So they had me as an honoree, and I'm, I think I'm speaking there, doing something there as well. Yes. Okay, yes. real quick, before I forget, first of all, Tell the people what is Return of the Gods, mm -hmm. who will be there. Also, but before you say that, everybody wants to know the name of the cleanse that Digger and I uh, did, yeah. where they can go mm -hmm. to, to, to get it and, and be a part of it. So please tell the people that real quick. Absolutely. So the I'm also a wellness coach. Y'all experienced one of my wellness. You're coaching my wellness programs. coach. Yes, I'm I've so never, fortunate. I've never felt better. Thank oh, you. That's what's that's up. That's awesome. Okay, so yeah, um, amashs.com, a m m a s h s dot com. Go to our online store under detoxes and wellness camps, and you will see the seven day body tune up. That's what you all did. And that includes, if you're a man, you will receive a bottle of King Power. If you're a woman, you will receive the Goddess Life Elixir. I also uh, coach you three days out the week, give you a wellness plan, give you workouts, meditations. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, and we do a liver cleanse at the end of the week. And right. and you're done. You're I'm, doing it. I'm doing it. I'm <laughs> doing it. I'm <laughs> not doing it. What you laughing at? Nah, I can't laugh. Because when she said liver cleanse, <laughs> I just made, made a face liver like, cleanse. Actually, we, we mm, both kind of knocked out of the liver yeah. cleanse. All three of y'all sitting here ducked out. Y'all going to all do it together. No, no, no I, but drank, you know I drank the lemon juice. Okay. No, the lemon I juice. She talking about the olive oil with the damn salt. Okay. That's where I had to. I got a lighter weight I had to tap. I said, yeah. No. See, I, I, kept, out. Weight one. I kept the lemonade. The weight one. Okay, please. Okay. I kept the lemonade going past the seven days. I like the months. lemonade. Yeah. I'll do. You I could. I could do that, that standing yes. on my head. I killed it. That. But that that old olive oil with the yeah. with the sea salt and mm. yeah, I did the one day lemon I tap. juice. I tap. Which is that lemon juice is, is strong too. You mm. squeeze us. Who did lemons. the onion and the garlic? I, I did. did. I did. I did. That. I onion did. And the garlic. Well, no. I, okay, I did the garlic. I didn't have onion. I did the onion also. I did the garlic. Yeah. I'm not. How was that? I had, I had to dice the, the onion and like. Oh, yeah, yeah. that's what you're yeah, that's what you're Okay, so real quick. Okay. What is Return of, Return of the Gods? Where is it? What is it? Who is it? Okay. 
So I have another half. My sister, Kateria Knows, astrologist. She covers the Are sky, I cover the earth. We are actually twins in heaven, but okay. on earth we came at different times. She's two years older than me. Okay. But um, so she had a vision of an event, a sacred event back in 2012 of our people just coming together and just celebrating the change of the times, celebrating the fact that we have the truth. We know who we are. We know why we have been lied to. And we have the opportunity to return to our position on the planet. This is a vision that the ancestors gave to her, the Most High mm. gave to her. And so uh, she's, she's not just a dreamer. She's a manifester. She woke up and said, this has to happen. And so... I was like, are you serious? You, we're, it's just like, yes, I have to ha this has to happen. And so she just began to work. I was like, well, you just do your thing. This is back in two, five years ago. Do your thing, and I'll add in, and I'll see what, you know, what I can assist you with. And she just began to put this event together, and I started to add in, bring my colleagues together, bring my people that I knew together. We honored Michael Beckwith. We honored Dr. Delbert Blair of the Meta Center. We honored um, Dr., uh, Mary Ka Ra, a, a priest of... Uh, ancient African um, comedic sciences out in LA and uh, was just we were at the top of the hill at Kenneth Hahn Park 1700 melanated people just celebrating listening to nice. African drums just dancing we had Sarak the MC perform it was an amazing event shout out to Sarak Sarak the MC yeah Booked shout out busy. to him and so then we had it again 2016 you know everyone dressed in white and gold you know at uh, at um in San Pedro, overlooking the ocean. It was just in a beautiful, beautiful event. And this year's event is expanded. It's a three-day celebration. First day is dedicated completely to hip-hop, hip hop, honoring brand Nubians. Lord Jamar will be receiving that award. You two are hosting Yay. the return of the gods of hip-hop, Ashe. So just bringing the culture back, you know, just bringing the elements back. And showing that, or well, bringing them, you don't like back and you don't like return. Just bringing them to the forefront again, mm -hmm. you know, and celebrating. You know, we're honoring uh, Pac as God's MC, and I have an artist painting a huge mural to Pac, and um, oh. and so we're also honoring uh, Professor Griff, and we're honoring Sarak the MC. We're honoring um, B Dot Battle Rapper, okay. conscious Battle Rapper, and uh, we have ton of performances as well. Soleil is performing. Wonderful goddess mentor Shouts to me. Soleil. Shout out That's to Soleil. Right. I love homie. her. I sit at the feet of Soleil. For a lot of people don't know that progress, uh, Professor Griff and Soleil are married. Yes. Right. If you're not aware of this. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and Soulflower Amen, Tebe Zelengo, he's a uh, hip hop violinist. He'll be performing. And um, TSK, which is my group. I'm a part of a hip hop group, Thyself Known. Uh, we'll be, you know, headlining as well as a, couple, a few others, you know, uh, Hassan and oh, Prodigy. You just made yourself the headliner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we will be isn't, headlining. Isn't that the beauty of putting you together know, your yeah. own thing? Well, I put this thing together, so uh, like, yeah. I'm going to be the motherfucking I've got headliner. Nas, Jay-Z performing. We're going to do a tribute to Pac, and I'm the headliner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm humble. Uh, okay, so then, you know, and then... B boys, B girls, all of that, you know, off the top battles, all of that. What else was up? Nice. And then ah. the main day we have the Royal Festival. Okay. That's the huge African fashion show. You know, uh, theme colors is royal blue and gold. I saw some pictures yeah. of some of the past ones, and I'm, it did look like some really royal shit. Yes. I saw her come out looking like some shit. Some <laughs> <real> <laughs> royal. <laughs> Fucking queenly shit. Yeah. I was like, damn, this shit looked like do it. some shit I, I needed to be at. Like, it just Absolutely. definitely looked like some positive shit. And we're honoring Queen Afua, you know, Master Healer. Um, right. We're honoring Chef Aki, another sister doing right. it, teaching Professor people Kaba how to Kamenei eat. Professor Kaba Kamenei also. Professor Kaba Kamenei. He was on all the Hidden Color series, Master Historian. Mm -hmm. And then we're also um, having a tribute to Dick Gregory. And when does this go down? Uh, August 10th through the 12th. Um, okay. We also, for those of you who are looking for to stay, you know, to stay somewhere, we do, we do have a retreat homes. Uh, we have the God Chambers and we have the Goddess Chambers uh, for the men and women, and it's going to be on the beach. 
And so it's a full package. You get to get a VIP ticket to the event. You get pampering service at the that, at the house. You get a photo shoot. You know, so that's the package deal. Uh-oh, okay, a bunch and so of, a now, bunch of, and that's going to sell out. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So now I out. have a I have a link or something, <laughs> yeah. and and oh, so I'm yeah. going to post the link right here, and right? Gonna, yes. And I beat you to it, girl. What? I'm going to post the link here. I was going to say, because Rod Digger going to sell tickets, too. Yeah. Y'all well, can get them from Rod tickets. Digger, too. And if you, well, we'll put you here. But I, I just, I just, I just. I actually, who who going to win, though? I, I was actually going to make a joke. <laughs> I was going to make a joke. I was about to say, wait a minute. No, the, the gods and goddess chambers. I'm going to just put it up here right now. With, with the, with the. Um, and if you click this link. <laughs> with the, Goddess life. Then I get my cut. <laughs> you know what's going on. You didn't with. take that divine. I get my cut too. when you click <laughs> when you buy that package from clicking my link. So go ahead and click the motherfucker. Oh, you know, put a both up. Oh yeah, well what you have you have you're not selling the chambers, you're selling the tickets. You're selling the weekend pass tickets. A hundred day weekend pass, you get the full access $100. to the yeah, to the event. Is that what I said? Hundred dollars. Light hundred dollars. Come on, yeah, hundred dollars. Come out, San Diego. It's a light hundred. World Beat Center. Who doesn't want an excuse to go to Cali? San Diego. You know all this culture, all this melanin. Says seventeen hundred melanated people in one place. Well, we could have five thousand. Five thousand. This is this is the year. Well, listen, we got to get ready to wrap this Everybody up. Everybody just knocking back go on goddess lights. <laughs> <day. King> power. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> that sounds like a hell of a week. like we're gonna bring the gods down <laughs> and, and, um, and return to our royal space. And um, wait, I'm looking at uh, yes DVDs here, please. Just this is for you. Yeah. So this is my latest presentation: a Black Panther analysis, African culture, history, and Afrofuturism. Oh. Oh, nice. Available at uh, website AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. Thank you. One for oh, you, nice. One for you. Oh, this is so, analysis so, of the Black Panther, yeah. the movie, so I break down Wakanda. The film. Yeah, yeah. I, break I thought you were talking about, you know. Oh, no, no. I break Huey down the film. Well, it, uh, that ties into it, but I break down the film, uh, the African cultural influences, tie that into African history, ancient Kemet, the different African cultural influences. And the word Wakanda is not a made up word. That's in Native American languages. Sioux mm. Indian language, Omaha Ponca, as well, means uh, possesses secret powers, but it's also in the Bantu language wow. uh, as well, coming from uh, Southern Africa also. Uh, and there's a Wakanda water park in Wisconsin. It's yeah, don't you be having people thinking Wakanda <laughs> really exists out this motherfucker. Now. Right, they, no, no. They're going to get super excited. <laughs> you mean I really can go to... Yeah, Wakanda's a real word, okay? Yeah, it's a real it's word. A, it's yeah. not a real place. It's not a real place, No, okay? no, it's not a real place. Relax. It's a real word. But it draws from uh, African culture. It draws from traditional African cultures, things like that. We see this played in, We see this uh, displayed in the movie. Maasai culture, Dogon, Obahimba from Namibia, Lesotho, uh, Lesotho uh, from Southern Africa. So we see all that represented in the film. Well, listen, we appreciate both of you coming to join us here on the Godcast. Uh, before we go, Imhotep, how can people reach you? Uh, visit our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com, Michael Imhotep, I-M-H-O-T-E-P on YouTube, uh, The AHN Show on Twitter, and uh, The African History Network on uh, Facebook. You can also email me, info, I-N-F-O, at AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. And Herb Alchemist Goddess, how can people get with you? Yes, you can reach me on IG and Facebook at Herb Alchemist. Alchemist spelled A-L-K-H-E-M-Y-S-T. And also at AmasHS.com, A-M-M-A-S-H-S.com. And Return of the Gods, E-N-T, dot com as well. Um, and at Return of the Gods, E-N-T, on IG. And I do have a... a I do have a website that's just for Goddess Life Elixir alone because Goddess Life deserved her own website. Yeah. Oh. This, levels, <laughs> this levels to this Goddess Life. Yeah, and that's gleelixir.com, G-L-E-L-I-X-I-R.com. That's where you can find testimonials for Goddess Life as well as if you subscribe, you can get access to our events that we host. What are those testimonials like? <laughs> Ciao! <laughs> Screaming orgasm. I'm a geyser right now. <laughs> well, yo, I need water. <laughs> I, I definitely thank both of you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having thank us. Thank you. Uh, um, yes, you both guys. are friends to the show, and Yay. you know we'd love to have you back Anytime. at some Just let me know. other time in the future. Um, once again, if you'd like to donate to the show, go to patreon.com slash you know what I mean, cash.me slash dollar sign you know what I mean, or you know what I mean dot com slash support. For the you know what I mean Godcast, I am Lord Jamar. And I am Digger Digger. Peace. Peace.
Peace. It's the absence of all confusion. United we stand, divided we fall. Two fingers together, the real peace sign, y'all. Brand Nubian peace gear. Hoodies. T-shirts. Snapbacks. Available at hoodchee.com. Get yours today.